there's so many things now that are going unreported by myself and by the neighbors because it's like nothing's going to happen. So why spend the emotional energy? Well, family frustrated with the system after they say two people were seen having sex in a public alleyway in broad daylight. Good evening and thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Sean Alzey. The couple says they see people walking through doing drugs all of the time. But they say this was a first. They live near Jefferson and Northwest Boulevard, Emerson Garfield neighborhood specifically. That's where we find nonstop locals John Webb. John. Yes, Sean, good evening. This is where they say the two had sex. It was mid-morning, and it was in direct view of their child's playroom, which is directly behind me. Ryan Anderson said he called police multiple times, but said they never responded. It is frustrating, and it feels a little defeating to think of, like, okay, they're supposed to call, they ask us to call, they want to build a, a comprehensive view of what's happening so they can assign resources to help cover you do that, you do that, you do that, and then it's like, does this even matter? Last Friday, Ryan Anderson, who just moved to Spokane about a year ago, says he looked out the window and saw what's become an all-too-familiar sight. They parked up, they had some luggage, they had some bags, they were getting those off, and I thought, okay, what's going to go on here? They were doing drugs, Anderson says. Not uncommon, according to Anderson, and certainly evident based on all of this paraphernalia you see in the alleyway. But he would never expect what was about to happen next. And then they started um, being a little inappropriate with their behavior. Hands in pants, they started, you know, getting a little bit, uh, a little bit handsy. Handsy, and then even more. We're pausing the video right here. At this point, Anderson says things became extremely inappropriate. Okay, this is awful. And what's even more awful is the fact his child's playroom had a direct view. He called Crime Check, but says no one responded. He called cops, and he says no one responded. And he eventually called 911, and he says no one ever responded for the rest of the day. Yeah, I felt awful to have this happening, and then to call to ask for some help with it, and then to not have a response. I called Spokane police and Julie Humphreys, the department spokesperson, looked into the matter. She said that all of the officers were on higher priority calls during that time. Although Humphreys told me, quote, just because it's not a high priority call, it doesn't mean it's not important. She told me that you should continue to report these types of crimes so that if a trend develops, they can conduct an emphasis in the area. But Anderson won't be making those calls much longer. We moved to Spokane about a year and a half ago. Uh, working professionals are able to work remotely. So we chose this place. We are now in the process of choosing another place. John Webb, nonstop local. Right, <laughs> yeah. Well, John reporting there, and like most industries, law enforcement is struggling to recruit and retain. Earlier this year, Spokane police reported to the city council that while hiring is trending down, Departures and retirements are trending up.